And Father, we thank you. Because you are good. Because you are kind. We pray in Jesus' name as the word of God has been thought today. Let it come in depth. Let him answer questions. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So let's let, let's go ahead and finish to this this morning. So this morning I want to talk about um, how to make your relationship or marriage better. So this is for those that are dating and this is for those that are married. And how do you make it better? How do you make it better? You know, um, the way the church told us to make our marriage better was to pray. Yeah, they say that once you marry the will of God, that's it. But we know that that's a challenge. So let's turn our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4. I want to tell you why it's very difficult today to teach marriage from the Bible. I want to tell you today. And the reason why I want to tell you that today is this. Because the Bible, most of the time, does not expressly teach. Expressly means a particular subject about details in the Bible. You never see the Bible talk about sex in marriage, finance in marriage. So, why do we get what we teach from the Bible? We teach when we observe the pattern. As a matter of fact, most people in the Bible had marital problems. You never realize that? Like Abraham? Like David? Like who? Solomon? Most people in the Bible had marital problems. They were very good with their relationship with God. But they also had marital challenges. But how do we teach about marriage you know first sorry Hebrews chapter 4 verse 11 see what the bible says here it says let us labor let us labor therefore to enter into the rest lest any man fall into the same example of unbelief so what we do when we teach about marriage if you're a very smart bible teacher is this you look for the patterns of those that had great marriages and say let us copy the patterns and look for the patterns of those that have bad marriages and say, let us what? Avoid the patterns. That's what you do. And that's why in this teaching, I've asked people to share a lot because you'll be surprised how much we can learn from their sharing. Glory to God. So today, let's turn to First Peter 2 verse 21 again. Let me just read all the scriptures that lays the foundation. First Peter chapter 2 verse 21. The Bible says this, for even hitherto you were called, because Christ also suffered for us. I'm talking about the issue of example and patterns. Leaving us an example that we shall follow in his steps. So, one of the ways we learn about marriage in the scriptures is to look for the examples and say, okay, the people that did well, this is what they did. The people that didn't have a great marriage, this is what they did. So I know what to avoid and I know what to pick up. So I'm going to run. Why do couples drift apart? Number one, they lose mutual respect for one another. Why do couples drift apart? Number one, they what? They lose mutual respect for one another. When, and the reason also is that with, with closeness comes familiarity. With familiarity comes disrespect. So how do you know you've lost respect for someone? See the way you speak to him. This was the lady that when you guys were dating, if she called you, there's a way you pick the phone. Oh, this is a guy that when you were dating, when he called you, before you pick the phone, you will show your friend, shh, Daniel is coming. You show your friend, then you start jumping. But now that you're married, see, finish has entered. This was the guy that when you were dating, he says, I'm coming to your house. You've entered kitchen. Cook this, cook that, cook this, cook that, cook that. Now, he's coming home. Honey, see here, eh, this food issue, eh, I'm just tired. So what? why do marriages drift? Because we lose, we lose mutual respect for each other. Just lose mutual respect for each other. When you were single, her birthday, you would do so much for her birthday. But now, uh, <laughs> sorry, all of you that don't understand my like, colloquia. This, this woman, this woman, your birthday is tomorrow. Ah, but some of you even forget. You lose much of respect. Okay? So, one, two, three. So, so, how do I know that? Look at this woman, Saul's, look at this woman in the Bible. 
Saul's, um, Saul's daughter, what's her name? That married David. Micah. Micah got so familiar with David. David was dancing. Micah said to David, you are dancing like a lunatic. How can a woman say that to her husband? He says, you are dancing like a lunatic. And David said, I will dance more. David also insulted her back. He said, I will dance more. That is this lunatic dance that made me get the throne of your father. The two of them had lost mutual respect. Because David should have not responded that way. Micah should have not spoken that way. Do you remember who he is that you start raising your voice on him? Do you remember you postulated for her before you start raising your voice on her? There's a lack of mutual respect. And that's why the Bible teaches in Ephesians when it talks about marriage that the two must honor one another. The second reason why couples drift apart is this. Because of consistent quarrels. Consistent what? Quarrels. See, in marriage, you must learn to overlook things. In marriage, there are things you want to happen in the first three years of marriage that will only happen in the ten years of a marriage. Who knows what I'm talking about? No, no, no. Talk to me now, if, if you know what I'm talking about. There are things you hope will happen in the first two years of a marriage. It will not happen until year ten. If you know what I'm talking about, please wave again. Let me see you. Great. Because some things just take time. Glory to God. So sometimes, what you're crying about, it's not even that it's wrong. You may cry about the right thing, but the timing is wrong. And sometimes you have what to cry about, but just overlook things. Glory to God. I mean, I have seven of them, but let me just give you two. We'll continue some other time because those are the things that I'm not interested in teaching you what makes people drift apart. I'm interested in teaching what makes them closer. The third thing that makes people drift apart is foundational problems. Foundational problems. Look at Leah. Leah, um, what do you call it? Um, what's her husband again? Jacob. The problem with Leah was that Leah was never Jacob's choice. If you read the Bible very well, everybody knows Leah was a better wife than Rachel. But Leah was not Jacob's choice. And Jacob made it known through other marriage. The reason why some people are struggling their marriage is this. The foundation had problem. They married because they were desperate. They married out of pity. Some of you guys, good Samaritan, you just pity and pity and pity and you marry. Then you're not happy. Some of you, not so, some of you, that, that's how some ladies are. They will just pity the guy and marry him. They are, you, after he pestered, pestered, pestered me, I just should my giving. Giving to what? If you want to help somebody, you don't help them with your life. Some, so, so I'm telling you, you, I've seen ladies, you know, and some of you, that's why you feel as if they abuse you because you date them, you use all your money to fund him, you send him to school, you get him job, then when he becomes comfortable, then you're no longer fine. The reason why is that he was not looking for a wife, he was looking for a supporter. Some of you, men, Bob the Builder. You know Bob the Builder? You love investing in them. You will invest and invest and invest. Once they become wealthy and they are okay, they now walk out of your life. And you will hear things like, I didn't want to marry him, but all the things he had done for our family. Uh, have you heard things like that before? He said, my mother said that I will be an ingrid not to marry him. Don't even find someone like that to marry you. Never allow someone to marry you out of pity. You will suffer for it. Never date, marry someone out of pity. You will suffer for it. So the question is this. So how do we become, how do we become closer if we're dating or married? Number one, number one, number one. Number one, number one. But clear, but cl- Declare and agree on your relationship or marital goals. Can we be clear and we agree on our relationship or marital goals? We need to be clear. 
The reason why is that if you're not clear, it's difficult to achieve what you're not clear about. And if you want to work on your marriage, can you also be clear about what you want to work on? Harmony is difficult without clarity. What did I say? Harmony, alignment is difficult without what clarity. So let's say, this was the pro- let me tell you something. This was the problem of Lot's wife. Lot says, God said we should leave Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot's wife says, I'm not leaving. Along the way, she turned back and became a pillar of salt. Why did she turn back? She turned back because she was not in agreement with leaving Sodom and Gomorrah. The question is this. What you want? Does your partner know you want it? Does your partner agree that you want it? Because if your partner does not agree you want it, two of you will keep working on different things together. Things like children. Things like school fees. Things like lifestyle. What kind of marriage do I want? Things like sex. All of you that are married or dating. Begin to, how much sex is good sex for you in a week? Where are the couples? Let me ask them. Pastor nee, how much sex is good sex for you in a week? <laughs> or, or as a pastor, you don't have that number. <laughs> then I will come to corner. Uh-huh. Yes, oh yeah, Pastor nee, tell me. Twice a week is okay. Twice a week is okay. What does the wife think? What do you think, ma? It's okay as you said. <laughs> Connell. Yes. Mm. Where's the microphone? Since you've I've given the microphone. Since you've Yes. Uh, you know, I have a young wife. Yeah. So it's as much as it turns me on. So, so it's not twice a week. It's more than twice a week. I can see the wife has entered the chair, so I'm not going to call her. <laughs> Praise God. The challenge is this. See, see the perspective. You will not say, ah, look at Connor's family as much as they turn her on. But you're not married to Connor's wife. If you want to destroy a marriage, compare it to another person's marriage. If you want to destroy it, just compare it. But the thing is this. Do we agree? Do we agree? My children must go to which school? C, CIS. Some, I, I don't know how expensive that is. Is that an expensive school? Very expensive. They're paying dollars. Before they go there, can we agree? And you will not tell your wife that wants her to go to CIS. Okay, I don't have a problem going to CIS. This is how much I earn. This is how much I can put aside for salary that I will not be praying about it. That can only send two children to CRS, but we have three. Will you pay for number three? The wife will now say, okay, I will pay for number three. Praise God. CRS will go. Wife will say, I don't have money to pay for number three. We say, can we look for a cheaper school for them to go to? That's agreement. Glory to God. Just simple agreement. And the thing is that you say your own, I say my own, we explain, then we come to a conclusion. Glory to God. Hmm. Be clear on the relationship. You need to be clear on the, relation, on the kind of relationship you want. And you cannot say, what is good for this person is good for me. Because we're very different. The second thing is this. So, how do you become closer? But clear and agree on the relationship and marital dreams. If you want to improve, so let's say you want to improve. For example, you heard what Toyosi said. I'm learning, we're improving our communication. So, one of the key ways we improve our communication is this. When he talks, he needs to take his time to reflect. So, I give him time to go back, 
reflect and come back. So let me, let me say something here quickly. The way to destroy a relationship is this, is to work on too many things at the same time. Many of you, as you're working on finance, you're working on sex, you're working on communication, you're working on in-laws. Ah! It's too much. Give yourself target and say, for the next one quarter, what we want to work on is the most important thing, our communication. What's our communication? The goal is that I want to be able to hear you and understand you. You want to be able to hear me and understand me. And we can have conversations without arguments. So that's what we're working on. The, if you work on too many things, there'll be too many fights. So you'll throw it away. So choose to work on one thing at a time. Maybe after all this teaching, someone say, what should I start from? Work on your health, on your emotional soul. Why? Once you are not okay, your mind cannot be okay. So you need to begin to say, okay, this is where I am. What I'm working on, I'm just working on my baggages. I'm offloading it. So some people, after this teaching, what wrecks it is that they are working on 25 things. It's too much. It's so much to work on at the same time. Glory to God. So the first thing about relationship is this. If you want to work on your relationship, be clear and agree on your relationship or marital what? Dreams. Be clear. Just be very clear. Discuss it. Okay, this is my opinion. What's your opinion? The second thing is this. Deal with emotional baggages. Deal with what? Emotional baggages. Third John verse 2. Third John verse 2. Third John verse 2. Third John verse 2. Deal with emotional baggages. Third John verse 2. Quickly, are we there? See what it says. It said, Beloved, I wish you prosper and be in health, even as what? What does that mean? The health of your soul determines the health of your marriage. Oh, wow. The health of your soul determines the health of your marriage. If your soul is not healthy, see, your marriage will not be healthy. If your soul is damaged, your marriage will be damaged. If your soul is wounded, your marriage will be wounded. You heard what that lady said. You know what she said? She said because of, she, she had things from where she's coming from. So the question is this, Men, all of you that are single, you know what I think you should do? You should spend this time trying to heal and put your soul together. And that's why in our church, that's why in our church, that's a great time to clap, praise God. Yeah, that's why in our church, when people break up, we ask them to take some time of dating. Not because no one is getting married, but because we just want them to be able to unwind. Because what happens is that people that have been hurt in a relationship are still bleeding. They enter another relationship and they start bleeding on the person that did not curse them. The health of your soul determines the health of a relationship. Let me tell you a story you may never know. You will see, but you never interpret it. Did you know that Tiger Woods, all his problems started when his father died? Who knows what I'm talking about? Who read it? It's a document. Tiger Woods, he had women problem, began to lose game. It was when his father died. And maybe there was something that damaged his soul that he could not recover from. And I'm saying to you, because you will just find out you're struggling. So the health, so you, 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 you know, this was a top champion. His father died, then he got into women trouble, then he had games trouble, then I'm not sure if he had, I'm not sure if he had alcohol trouble at some point like that. He just began to move from one trouble to another trouble. And you can just, why is all this happening after his father died? Because his father was his, was his father and his coach for a long time. Maybe he lost the person he used to talk to. The health of your soul determines the health of your marriage. Why is this important? Because when your soul is not healthy, that lady said something that was powerful. The first thing is, is when you're in a relationship, you will lack empathy. Because survival is what is survival is the key to the game. Once your soul is not healthy in your relationship, it will be survival. You will not be able to empathize with the person that what that you're with. So when the person has something, you don't really care. Even when you say, I understand, you don't really understand. Because at the end of the day, have you not seen someone that is in the hospital, you're in the hospital, and the person comes and says, hey, about the money we're talking about. You say, honey, I'm sick. You say that I know, but the money is also important. 
And that person is dealing with something else. Once you have emotional baggage, you will not be able to empathize because your pain will blind you from seeing your partner's pain. Oh my God. What is what I'm talking about? Your pain will blind you from seeing what? Your partner's pain. The second thing that will happen to you when you have emotional baggage, this is what affects your relationship. The second thing is this, you're going to have unrealistic and unmet expectations. And the expectation is going to be because of the pain you carry. So look at that guy I spoke to you about that he broke up with somebody and went to meet the person and they began to have sex in front of him. Anytime he dates a girl, when they get his chat, let me see your phone. If I, if, you're, if, if I, I should know your password, let me see your phone. Let me check your phone. Let me check your pictures. And the guy thinks that that's normal. But the only reason why he thinks that's normal is because of what? Of where he's coming from. Because your emotional baggage is going to make you have unmet expectation and unmet what? You know, um, demands. Unrealistic demands. Some of you, what you're really missing is your father. And you're looking for your father and your husband. And unfortunately, your f- husband cannot be your father. Neither can your wife be your mother. So you come home and you expect your wife to have the maturity of your mom. She's a young lady. She's not your mom. The same thing with the man you're dating. He's not your father. And you keep saying, my father will say this to me. Listen, he's not your father. You say, my mom will cook this way. She's not your mom. Deal with it. Stop heaping expectation. Your mother, you know, but, but your mother is 70. This lady is just 35. And you want her to be prepared the same way. Can you be fair and honest? But that's what, but that's what happens when people have emotional baggage. They don't even realize that they are, they don't even realize that they are, <laughs> they don't even realize that, <laughs> oh my God. You know, I shared my story with you. And my wife told me, said that, um, so, he said, I should love you. How should I love you? I said, I don't know. The reason why I was brought up in the way where you don't, where you don't even, you've not even experienced express love. So when they talk to you about love, it's just a difficult conversation to have. And in my mind, I was figuring that if you love me, you'll figure it out. But that was a stupid and unrealistic expectation. When you go up in a loving home, you know over time that people that love each other express their needs to each other and those people work at meeting it. People don't assume needs, needs are verbalized. Glory to God. Let me tell you some, let me tell you one of the areas I struggle. I really feel that if people love you, they will not fight you. But conflicts are the reality of love. That's the truth. You know, so, so because in my own house, this is how we fight. When we fight, we just put it in the box and put it down. And we leave it. So there was a time, there was a time that, and it's not gossip or we're not, what do you call it? It's not mali so. Only that there's a box. Like me and my brother now, for like four years, we're in Lagos, we never spoke. For the normalies. He will come in my bed, I'll call him on his birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. How are you? How are you? But there was one issue that we could not talk about that affected our conversation. That's what it is. Because I was trained up in the house that instead of you to address issues, we fake love. Watch this now. Fake love, avoid fight at all costs. Real love fights when it's necessary for it to grow. Fake love avoids what? Fight at all costs. So what it does is that it buys peace temporarily but loses the battle of love. Real love says we need to fight it to get it back. And that's why this teaching, some of you must go for real love and say it's going to be a tough conversation. We'll make it as easy as possible, but we have to talk about this. All of you that are dating people that don't know you are dating them. Skeleto. 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 
You are dating people that don't know you are dating them. Is that the one to be forward? Okay. With your heartbreak, you will not only be forward, you will have a quantum leap. <laughs> Glory to God. When you, when, so the other thing that when you have emotional baggage, this is how it affects your relationship, it will, it will not help you be able to give your best and it will help, not help you be able to receive love. You will not be able to give it. You will not be able to what? Receive it. And the last thing is this. It will affect your perspective. When people have emotional baggage and you tell them the truth, they will think you're telling them from a selfish point of view. They just cannot take the truth. Glory to God. And the last, the last, the last thing I will say today is this. So the first one is to be clear and agree on your relationship and marital goals you want. Second thing, deal with emotional baggages. You know, and, and ask yourself, how is this affecting my perspective? How we, because, listen to me, write your perspective down and ask yourself, is this really true? Or it's something I've told myself over time. And the last one is this. You will learn how to, how do you become closer? How to make your marriage work? Learn how to communicate and build what? Friendships. How do you communicate? Why is communication important? You know, number one, you need to communicate to know each other better and build friendship. In the first service, we had, um, we had a woman talk, married for about 40 years. And she said that now all our children are left the house and married. It just me and my husband. He said, if we are not friends, I'll be tired. So, why is friendship important? Because it, why is communication important? Because you become friends. The second thing is this. You, you don't become friends. Communication helps you meet one another needs. Because we can tell you, oh, this is how I feel. That's how I feel. This is what I want. So, people that say, I don't like to talk. It's a bad thing. We were created to communicate. So, you must, communication helps you know each other, helps you meet each other's needs. Number three, helps you solve problems. Helps you solve problems. So, what are the hindrances to communication? The first one is approach. 7% of communication is what is being said. 38% of communication is how it is said, the tone. Then, 55% of communication is what? The body language. And you know how you say it. Men are guilty of tone. So, you want your food, but you say it in a condescending way. Where is my food? You've spoken to the house of tone now. But ladies, I don't want to... Why is my husband angry? All I said was that he always says I don't have money. Watch what he said. He always says I don't have money. But see how you said it. Every time I don't have money. I don't have money. I don't have money. I don't have money. Because you don't realize that 53% of your communication is verbal. Are you here? So when you're talking, when you're talking, just do a video. You'll be surprised what you see. What you're saying. So the second thing that hinders com um, communication in marriage is this. Criticism. Criticism. Some people are trained as what I call verbal assassins. Verbal. They shoot people with their mouth. Ha! Huh? They shoot people. When the husband talks, there's nothing to say again. <sighs> May I... <laughs> As a right-thinking person, I can't do this. Oh. Just imagine, oh, as a right-thinking person, I can't do this. You ah, This is, what are you talking to? You've just been talking like a child. Verbal assassins. And once your husband or wife is a sniper, you start running. Because every time they say let us talk, they bring gun to the conversation. They just bring gun. <laughs> and once you see gun, what do you do? Uh-huh. And most of the time, when there are, two, when there are two, two people in a relationship, one of them is a verbal assassin. And that's how they've been trained. They will just be, you're talking, they'll be leaving small, small insult, pa. Intelligent insult, pa. In, in small short of pa. They'll just be, they don't say it the way you know they were born again, so you can't say you're mad. 
But to be realistic, how can a normal human being say this? What does that mean? Yeah, not normal. Criticism. Every time, sex, 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 Z food. That's a compliment, Abby. Oh, he didn't see that coming. He's like, sex, 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 Z food. Sex, 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 Z food. Ah, there's more to life than sex. Oh. What have you said? He knows nothing else. That's sex. See, there's more to life. That, that means all that there is about his life is what? Sex. Glory to God. I say glory to God. When you criticize people, criticism, better criticism. That's what happened eventually. And people will stop talking when they know you're going to what? Criticize them. Instead of criticism, can you appreciate? You know a lot of people, it's the day the food is not good, they complain to their wife. The day the food is good, they never say thank you. But so, you know, since you can't say thank you, the day is not good. Don't talk now. Glory to God. Is this, is this getting to you? How many of you are seeing yourself? You are see, oh, you see yourself today. Come and tell me what you saw. Give him the microphone quickly. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Just give him quickly. Yeah. Microphone walk, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Okay. I saw myself in the sense that I raise my voice a lot of times. Good. Yeah. When she starts, I'll just, am I doing you talking to her like that? Mm -hmm. So mine overshadows us because I'm this aggressive person. Good. Yeah, because I, I watched my dad matric my mom and I vowed that I was going to take care of my wife. So me not doing the same. Watch, 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 watch. So I watched my dad matric my mom yeah. and I made my decision on what take care of my wife. Yeah. Well, guess what? He's doing what? Opposite. opposite. Because you don't do what you want. You do what you are programmed to do. Mm -hmm. You don't do what you want. It's a what? It is software programming. That's, right. That's good. Thank you. God bless you. Let's take another comment. Let's take another comment. Quickly. You, you saw yourself. You saw yourself. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Let's appreciate our church members. They are always so honest. Yeah. Tell me. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, so when you talked about people looking for their parents in whoever they are dating. Yeah. Um, growing up, I grew up with so much love. I was my dad's favorite and we're very close. So my dad indulged me. He gave me everything I wanted when I wanted. Mm. And so I find myself dating men who are 10 years older or 12 years older because I know they can indulge me the way my dad indulged wow. me. Wow. And, and how has so, that worked for you? Um, it worked and the problem is when I'm with someone younger, it just would not work because I'm looking for, I mean, my dad died eventually, so I'm constantly looking for that kind of love again. And I'm with younger people who will not And, and you notice that, that love you're looking for is father to child. Yeah. I, are you not seeing the thing? So that lady, if she's not careful, she'll be delayed for a long time. Because she's looking for what is not there. She's looking for her father. All right. Okay, good. Let, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's take one more. Let's take, is, this is good. Are we getting blessed? Yeah. Let's take one more from the middle. So one more for the middle. Just raise up your hands if you have. If, if you know how we can apply this. This touch in a specific way. Have you found anybody from the middle? Middle people, you don't have anything to say? Encourage me by saying something. Just say something. Is it as a single person, married person? Thank you, my brother with the cap. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with the microphone? Is anything wrong with the microphone? Yeah, go ahead. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, um, me, I know how to pass polite insult. My, my brother, thank you for being honest. So, 
so for instance, um, something happened last night, and um, we were talking. I was like, which university do you go to? She told <laughs> BOOM! <laughs> which university do you go to? <laughs> so she said, she told my university. I said, ah, state university is not good, though. So. <laughs> See? how you are talking. She was like, uh -uh, what happened to my school? I said, because if I had gone to a federal university, we would be talking like that. Aye. That's one. Then secondly, I, I noticed that thing happened to me because um, my parents were not together right from small. I remembered when, when, when my mom came to pick us, pick us in Ibadan, you know, I, we, we grew up in, so she came to pick us from school and from there, I think I was five years old then, and um, I never lived with my parents. I just have this only just from the mother's side. And I know how my mom um, treated me particularly because I was a man. I, she was always saying that my dad always maltreated her. So I grew up with that. So any woman that tried to do anything I somehow experienced from my mom, I give it to her back to back. I don't even wait. So, and so, when you were talking, and I was jotting with my phone, and um, when you talk about the criticism, I always want to, because when I was in school, when parents call, when they go for PTA, and there was a particular time my dad was not there, so my friends were asking me, we know they see your papa for school. Hi, that's, so all those things helped me to be very, very, so when, any, I'm very defensive. Any girl that comes, from, I don't, I can count one or two relationships because I'm not really into the relationship type. But did, the you see, I, did you see the impact of that? Any, not just him. Any girl that enters the trap. The people you broke up with, what did they say when you broke up with them? I'm too ash. Yeah. It, it comes out. You can tell. You can tell. They say you're too harsh. So, but recently I... This my current um, relationship. I really love the girl, and I. But you are still asking her what university did you go to. <laughs> so. So um, and I, some of the things I expect her to do without nobody telling you. Sometimes. You will call her, she will tell you she's washing her clothes. I'll be wondering, but you know I'll call you by this time. I'll not tell her. Even that, don't you see that? Um, don't you see my call? If she tells me she's washing her clothes, I'll tell her, that's why some of your clothes are not even neat. Because when I So, I am, I'm always passing polite and so, 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 hold on. Uh, pray, pray. <laughs> wow. Glory to God. My brother, pass the microphone. Who wants to say something? Yes, yes, yes. I, I will say the last comment and I will close. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. I think for me, it's taught me how to be more mindful when I'm dealing with my children. Because if we as parents are so broken or damaged by the impact of what our parents did mm. to us, you know, when I'm dealing with my children now, I'm so mindful of ensuring that I'm not passing that same that's right. thing that my parents passed on to me, to my children. It's so important. That, that's right. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I, I said this one of the earlier weeks. I said one of the reasons why you must deal with the emotional pain is because if you're not careful, you will pass it to your children. Amen. Let me say something as we close. Faith without works is dead. James chapter 2. It's not what you hear that changes you. It's what you do that changes you. As you hear, can you have a commitment to change? Even though it doesn't happen at once, can you have a commitment to change? This day we're going to pray for God to help us. Can you stand on your feet?